Hello guys, welcome to part 3 of my video series about how to add a line in connector and possibly also a Bluetooth receiver to old compact stereo systems, boom boxes, etc. In part 1 I talked about the basic functional blocks that you will find inside a device like this and in part 2 I showed you some practical steps and basically one method to hack a line in connection into such a device. And as you can see here on the back side of this stereo system, you find two RCA connectors. That's short for Radio Corporation of America. And a lot of the German viewers, I'd imagine, will wonder about the name RCA connectors because in Germany, it's a kind of a colloquialism that a lot of people call these chinch connectors. Even though that's actually spelled with a C and not CH, that would be cinch or kinch, but not chinch. But I'm quite sure that that name is not used outside of Germany. So that is kind of weird. Maybe you know the origin of that mix-up. So while I have shown you in part 2 how I installed these RCA connectors to the backside of the stereo system, I didn't really explain what the whole thing can be used for. But that is rather easy to answer. A general purpose line in, typically realized with RCA connectors, can be used in order to attach a vast variety of sound sources to your stereo system. For example, cassette drives, tape recorders, CD players, DVD players, Blu-ray players, but also smartphones, laptops, the output of your PC sound card, gaming consoles, and also everything else that has a 3.5 mm audio output jack, for example for headphones. And sometimes you might need an adapter, for example, from RCA to 3.5 mm, or you might need an adapter from RCA to DIN 5 pole, but, well, it's all basically the same standard. If you want to attach a turntable or record player to a general purpose line in, you will need a de emphasizer pre amplifier, though, in German called Entzerrer Vorverstärker and that will pre-amplify the very weak signal coming from the needle and also linearize that signal. A similar thing is true if you want to connect certain microphones to a general purpose line in, you will also require a pre-amplifier and there you go. But I don't want to talk about record players or any other old-fashioned piece of technology today. I want to talk about Bluetooth and how to add that to the stereo system, so let's get right into that. Okay, so I used these little Bluetooth receivers in earlier episodes before, but I don't know if I ever came around to talk about the very basics here. Now, what a Bluetooth receiver like this does is that you pair it with your smartphone, laptop or computer and then it will be used like Bluetooth headphones, only that there are no headphones directly attached, but that you have like a general purpose analog audio output here in form of a 3.5 millimeter plug. And you can simply plug in a 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter cable and use that with a given amplifier, for example, while in this case we need 3.5 millimeter to RCA. And the other thing that you find is a USB connector and that is simply for charging the lithium ion battery inside. So this can be used for a while without an external power source. And this particular model also has a little switch that can be used to switch this device on and off. And then you have two status LEDs that will tell you if it's still looking for a Bluetooth connection or if there is a Bluetooth connection and if it's charging and so on. But that will vary with different Bluetooth receivers. Now this particular model, I bought this on eBay for under 10 bucks and I will put a link to that in the video description even though I don't know if they will ship worldwide or not. You might have to look for an offer for your country and so on. And of course what you can simply do is to connect the USB cable to a charger and hook up the audio cable to a given sound system and connect that to the general purpose line in. And if you don't want to go through any more hassle, then of course you can use the Bluetooth receiver just like that. But I like the Bluetooth receiver to be included inside the device so that I have less cables dangling around 
and I can also use the line in for something else then. And that's what this video is about. It's just a suggestion how you can integrate a Bluetooth receiver like this inside a stereo system and use it more conveniently than in this way. Now I have realized this incorporation of the Bluetooth receiver inside another already existing device in different ways in some of my earlier episodes and I'm going to do it in a different way this time again. Now first again I open the enclosure because I want to desolder this little switch that can be used for switching this receiver on and off. And that is because I want to lead two wires out of this enclosure and then put another switch on the front panel in order to activate and deactivate the Bluetooth receiver that way. Another question is whether to keep or not to keep the internal battery of the receiver. Now it is good to have the battery because then you have a completely independent power supply that will not generate any audio noise whatsoever. But on the other hand this will somewhat limit the possible lifespan of the circuit because one day the battery will simply not work anymore and if it cannot be recharged anymore because of a fault of the battery the receiver will just shut itself off, at least this particular model. Now here in this footage I temporarily removed the battery but this time I am going to live with that and keep the battery instead. But in an earlier video that you can find in the video description I removed the battery entirely and soldered two wires to those free spots. And I then soldered a linear regulator on a piece of Vero board and installed that linear regulator inside the device so that I could use the original power supply that way to power the Bluetooth receiver. Now in a car radio that worked really well, but in a home stereo system like this one, hacking into the original power supply and having new ground leads and all that kind of stuff can generate a lot of audio noise and that is why I do not recommend that for this particular hack. But let's get on to the solution that I want to use this time then. And of course if there is an existing 5 volt rail that is powerful enough to handle another 50 milliamps of current you can use that as well. But that would require you to be able to find that rail and I'm going to suggest something here that is just simpler to do for people who are not that deep into electronics yet. So first of all I cut a hole into the enclosure of the stereo system and this is where the receiver will sit and we need the hole so that we can see the status LED from the outside. So what I do is to install the Bluetooth receiver inside its original enclosure including the battery inside the stereo system's enclosure and I do that again with MS Polymer. And I lead the two blue wires coming from the original switch contacts to the front panel where I have installed a second switch. And here you can see how I actually used both the remaining fourth contact from the first switch and the contacts from the new switch so that only when the line in is selected and the cassette drives are disconnected the second switch is flipped and the contacts are in series that only when those two conditions come together the Bluetooth receiver will be activated. And in order to transfer the audio signal from the Bluetooth receiver to the line ends, I simply cut off that 3.5 millimeter audio cable and solder that from the inside directly to the line in connectors. And the next step is to integrate just a standard USB charger or power supply into the sound system's enclosure. And what I do is to cut off the pins and that plastic here on the actual plug and then I try to open the enclosure, take out the PCB and solder two power leads to the pads that led to the plug. And I put the enclosure of the charger back together and use some glue in order to fasten the wires so that they cannot be pulled out. And I then also glue the charger next to the Bluetooth receiver and solder the other end of the power leads directly to the power input on the main board of the stereo system. And after having connected the charger and the receiver with a USB cable, I put the entire stereo system back together and we're ready for a final test now. 